Hi, my name's Justin and I'm from Red IT. The uh, purpose of today's screencast is to show you the new interactive dashboards feature within Sage CRM 7. Okay, so um, Sage CRM version 7, um, there's a couple of minor changes to it. The user interface has been jazzed up a little bit more um, so that we now have three default themes and we have a cleaner interface as designed by Sage. Um, we have a uh, interactive dashboard and uh, currently I'm looking at an interactive dashboard for a manager and the manager dashboard is usually fully featured um, comparative to a sales dashboard or a customer services dashboard as the manager tends to need to have a high level overview of the data that they're looking at. I'm going to focus on a couple of little points today. We're not going to go in depth with this uh, screencast. Um, if you'd like to know more information, then do, don't hesitate to contact me and I'll quite happily take you through the advanced features of it and show you what else it can do for you. Um, but today, hopefully, you'll get an idea of where we are and how it works. Right, to start off with, um, you'll remember from Sage CRM versions before now that the dashboard had um, columns that were designated either narrow or wide and although those data columns were simple to work with they weren't as featured as you'd want to and customizing them and putting custom content into your dashboard was a, a really tricky job. With the Sage CRM interactive dashboard that ships with Sage CRM 7, this is no longer the case. We have columns and boxes, which we now call gadgets, that are exactly the same size, doesn't matter what type of content you're listing within them. So um, here it is, we have this uh, interactive dashboard in front of us. Um, we're going to focus on the charts, the websites and the related data gadgets. Um, we'll pick up on related data gadgets right now. So in front of me I have a companies by type gadget and in here it's showing me that there are 121 pages of company records. They're showing 1 to 10 of 1203. Uh, in fact this is just doing a look up against the whole data set. Uh, being a manager and the administrator, I get to see the whole database. But obviously, if you had restrictions placed on your users um, based on territory or team, the data that they would see would be moderately less than what I see now. So we have the uh, companies by type, and in here we have four columns. The first column um, is an email uh, click link and um, basically clicking on this will enable you to send an email to the company email address. This is not the person email address, this is the company email address. Um, the gadget tells me quite nicely that uh, company name and who the account manager is and what type of customer they are as well. And um, with the gadgets you can apply advanced filters in here to allow you to um, get to your data more quickly. So that's all great I hear everybody say but what can I do with it? Well what you can do with it is you can by clicking on 3G Homes for instance you'll notice that my company contact box which previously had all of my person data in it for the database has filtered itself by that click and is now only showing me the 3G Homes default person list. In this case there's only one, but if I click on A Midlands and Son, we'll see two. We've got Susan Blakely and Clive Stewart. This allows me to quickly see as an overview who is working for what company and allows me to direct my communication to the right person as quickly as possible. So jumping over to the company contacts now, you'll notice that we have a a LinkedIn flag next to each of these and what it allows you to do is using the power of the LinkedIn social media is to link you as a salesperson or as a company owner to your clients um, and therefore they can get updates on what's happening in your company and what's happening in, in general. 
Um, it's a useful little tool um, and it can be installed as a default option within your Sage CRM interactive dashboard. So that's that. If I now scroll down a little bit, you see company cases, and company cases shows me the cases that I have for all the companies in the system. Now, currently, I have a chart that shows me the open cases by company, and like in previous dashboards, if I click on this chart, a window will launch, and I'll just go and grab that, and it's popped behind my screen. and it will show me the cases open by company report which gives me more detail as to what is going on within the CRM case system. Okay, um, I've put in a red IT gadget and the red IT company gadget is the same as the company gadget above or the person gadget above but what it's doing is it's showing me a little bit more detail as to what that company is. And we have my calendar and my tasks. Now, if we look at my calendar, we saw at one, uh, one o'clock today, I had a meeting with William Dolan. And that was set by using the quick appointment setter within the gadget itself. It's a very powerful little tool. It allows you to quickly run an appointment into your system um, for purpose of reminders. Now be aware that if you put a quick appointment in either in quick appointment or quick task it's unrelated to any of your company or person data so therefore you won't see it on your communications list. You'd have to go in and then edit it thereafter. But just to show you how to do it, let's say I've got a five o'clock appointment with Kylie Ward and it's regarding 3G Homes cases. Ooh. 3G Homes cases. I'd say it's going to be at 1700. She's not going to like me. It's going to be for an hour. And um, we'll click a quick appointment. Then using the scroll down bar, we can scroll through and see where it, where it is. Coming over to our tasks panel, we can do the same thing, and I can say uh, pick kids up from mums, and I can pop a quick task in there, and those tasks will obviously relate to your task and calendar list that sits in your normal my CRM environment. Lastly, in the manager dashboard, we have the Say CRM community ecosystem. Uh, essentially, this is just a website, and it's just showing you some of the website data that you can get to in it. And you can deploy any website you like into that, your corporate website, or maybe a competitor's website, or whatever you think is relevant to you. And they can be set relatively simply and easily. Um, and then we have an RSS feed. RSS feeds are, are very useful. Uh, they give you essentially a news list of what's going on in the in your specific uh, reader. So you can pick up a, a, an RSS feed from your favourite blog or maybe from the BBC or any of the news uh, websites will give you an RSS feed. And uh, it allows you to keep up to date with what's going on in the world without having to leave your CRM system. Okay, so we've seen the uh, overview for uh, a manager. Let's go in and have a look at um, William Dolan. Uh, William Dolan is a salesperson, and his dashboard is slightly different to the one that I have as a manager, in as much as that he will have less data to view, and he will need different data. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the My Oppor Open Opportunities gadget, which is on this left panel here. And we're going to have a quick look and see how this works. Firstly, you'll notice that we've got a green pin on the first column. Clicking on that green pin will allow me to create a task for that opportunity. Once I've created my task and hit the Save button, it will then take me back to the interactive dashboard. 
you'll note there that we had a security issue and it's because the CRM system, although you're working within a gadget and a dashboard, it still is a contextually aware of your security permissions. So if you are unable to do things like add a task for that specific opportunity, then it will tell you. And that could be for any reason. We then have our statuses, our descriptions and our stages so that we can have a look at what is uh, going on with our opportunities and what stages we're at. And then you'll see we have an actions button down the right hand side. Now the action button is actually your workflow process. By clicking on the action button you'll get an overlay panel pop up which will allow you to edit your workflow without having to go to the opportunity record itself. And there we go. We have the ability to interact with our record by clicking one of our workflow buttons. And again, we're not having to move out of our gadget or our dashboard to, to do so. So if we have a really quick phone call with a client who says that they're negotiating, or we feel that they're negotiating with us, we can click the negotiating button it will pop up the workflow window, as you'd expect, and we can hit the save button, and it will take us back to our interactive dashboard thereafter. So again, the process is quite simple, and it leads you from and to your dashboard panel. Okay, uh, William's also got a calendar, so he can pop in quick appointments into his calendar. And he's also got his opportunities in a chart, that he can see and uh, so we can see quickly what he's got in as much as what stages they're at and he, by clicking this again he can invoke the report to pop up in front of him and he can see more details about what's going on and an overview of how much he's due to pull in. Okay. He also has a companies and contacts list and the same happens for him. If he clicks BKS corrugated, the contact will come up for them. If there are more than one contract, he will get more, more than one result. He also has the safe CRM ecosystem, but he could quite easily have a online price list or a competitor's website in front of him to help him or aid him while he's selling. So that's the sales dashboard. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to pop over to see Kylie Ward's environment and see that Kylie Ward is a customer services uh, operative and therefore she has a requirement for different data than perhaps William Dolan or me as a manager. So looking at her dashboard, again she's got a very six, uh, very simple six column layout or six box gadget layout but hers is a little different to how everybody else is working. Connie's opted to have the case details gadget populate when she clicks on one of the cases. So she has her cases in front of her at all times. So if her clients ring her up and ask for an update on a case that she has, she can look quickly and give them a quick update on what's going on. So we're going to do that now. So if we click on our top case, you'll see that case details has populated and it's given us some basic detail that has allowed us to see what is happening within this case at this point in time. Again, she has the ability to interact with her workflow directly from her case panel by clicking on the action icon or she can email directly from her cases gadget to update clients or work colleagues on what's going on with this case. Kylie has also got an SLA status panel sitting down in the bottom right there. This is another report that shows her how many high priority, medium priority or low priority um, cases she has based on the SLA status. And she can click on that and produce a report. Okay, so that's essentially the interactive dashboards as they are now. As I say, there are a lot more. There is a lot more to it, and uh, there is uh, a huge amount of customization that can be done to fit your businesses. So, what I would advise is, if you can, uh, give us a call or drop us an email, and we'll book some time in for you, and we'll take you through how cases, uh, how the interactive dashboard can better serve you as a customer. Thank you for your time today. 